business. All right, my last question. Um, how many of these folks building software companies that you see, yourself included, are non-technical? Well, that's a great question. And, and if fact, they are non-technical, what do they do? Yep. Um, so I'm a developer, or I was. I haven't written code in years. But we actually ask, so we do a state of independent SaaS survey, and we put out a report, and it, like an industry report. And we asked the question, do you have at least one technical founder, right? Or, you know, and yes or no, right? And the number of SaaS companies, kind of bootstrapped-ish SaaS companies with zero, with no technical founders is like, tw I believe it's 20%, wow, 25%. So it's, wow. it's very possible. It is. And usually what the expertise they have, they're either the subject matter expert, like, we're going to build software for accountants. I was an accountant for 20 years, right? We're going to build software for UX designers. I'm, I was a designer for 10 years. They're either that or they're sales or marketing. That's what they should have. Now we've seen where there's a developer and then there's like the business person, the business guy or well, gal. Just means and like it's like anything. This is, yeah, it usually yeah. winds up meaning you're not actually that helpful and you probably shouldn't be a co-founder. You know, if you can't sell or market or like have input on the product, you know, or, or develop it. Like those are really the four roles. Um, you probably shouldn't be. So shouldn't if I'm, it. if I like, I'm not, I'm not technical, but mm -hmm. I, um, I can like tie stuff together and use Zapier and I'm super creative. How do I start a start a software company without hiring or I would mm -hmm. if maybe hiring Zip, but without having a co-founder? Right. So for you, since you have money, you would either acquire something because there's always stuff for sale that you may want to acquire and then just grow if you have a mar content marketing expertise, or you would hire, you know, a developer or an agency or something to build it. If you don't have the money, uh, a lot of people, non-technical will work a day job and actually funnel money to the side to basically pay for a developer to do it. Um, the other two approaches I've seen are exactly what you said, which is I'm going to build my minimum viable product using Zapier and Notion and chewing gum. All right. And I'm just going to cobble it together to the point where, Hey, if I get a few grand a month in revenue, this proves it. And now I'm going to use that to get it built. It's a harder way to go, but it's possible. The last one I've seen, which is genius. And this is what the founder of Castos did. Cause he's not, he's a single founder, not a developer. He worked a day job. He started a productized service podcast editing and he high, he got it up to, I forget what the number was, 30 or 40 grand a month wow. in productized podcast. He was one of the earlier ones. It was called Podcast Motor. He was working a day job the whole time. So then while he was, was in he that space, actually doing the editing or he would, no, uh, he did it at first and then, and then got someone overseas. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or even, even as folks in US and Canada doing it. Um, and there was enough profit margin that he then started reinvesting, you know, and said, oh, well, now I want to build. <laughs> now that I'm doing podcast hosting, he actually was in the podcast space. Someone says, I have this WordPress podcast plugin for podcast hosting on WordPress, and I want someone to kind of adopt it type thing. Since he was doing something in public, they approached him. He bought it for not very much money. And then he built wow. the entire, you know, what it, again is a seven figure business. He's raised, you know, three, aside from us, he's raised three quarters of a million dollars and it's grown fast. So that's the other way to do it is like, I even, I was a developer and I had to do it nights and weekends too, you know, and I was pulling money away from the day job. For the agency and, de and hiring a de developer, what, what's the best way to do that? Do a lot of these folks, like a lot, like when I was starting, everyone said like, oh, just go on Odesk and hire someone in India to do it. And I'm like, I don't know, man, that doesn't sound like I can like, like, Not you can't really, yeah. yeah. So like, what do you, tough. What, 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 are there any agencies that you like or for hiring devs, are you hiring someone by the hour in America? What, what's, what do you typically see? Yeah, I typically see, I see a lot of people going either f through referrals, like you get into a community, um, MicroConf Connect or Indie Hackers or whatever, Dynamite Circle, and you ask and you say, who has used someone whom you trust, right? So you try to get that referral. It's not just a, a flat look because going to Upwork, which used to be Odesk, is kind of a shit show these days. The other thing is there are now these Referral services aggregators. There's one called Trust Shoring, which is run by a guy who attends MicroConf, but he basically knows a bunch of Eastern European dev agencies. And if you come to him and say, I want to build an iOS app, he'll say, Cool, I have these three agencies that I that I refer to. He's almost like a broker in a way, yeah. but like he's a good dude and he knows them, you know, and so he and he's vetted them. And then there's one called Cloud Devs.com, and they do the similar thing for Latin America. 
And so the nice do you like, do you like top towel or anything like that? Top towels. Good. It's expensive. Um, right. Cause I think it's 150 an hour. So it depends on budget and all that. If you're, if you're scraping by, I haven't used top towel, but I've had friends use it and I heard quality was really good in the early days. And of course, like anything, it gets, you know, less and less, but, um, that's certainly something you could try too. How much would you budget to create an MVP? It depends on what it is. Just, you're talking like a SaaS app. Here's yeah. the other thing, man. If you if you are non technical and you've never started a startup before, I would say don't build a SaaS app. It's too hard. Like go. I have this thing called the stair step approach to bootstrapping, which is like start small with like a WordPress plugin, a HubSpot add on, a Salesforce add on, a Heroku add on, and go build that. Cut your teeth at it. It's way less expensive, way harder to maintain, and way easier to maintain. You get the experience, you get some revenue, then grow it to enough that you can buy out just buy out your day job. Eight grand, eight grand a month, maybe ten grand a month. Then, and now you have experience, you can double down and um, and do it. This but is awesome. To your to your question of building an MVP of a SaaS app, ten to thirty grand. If I were to throw it out. But and you think a non technical person could actually maintain that and understand what's no. going? <laughs> well, no. Then you'd need to have that agency sticker. Right. That's where I'm saying if you're non technical, um, you either need some money. I mean, this is why folks you build it. And you you pre-sell it, you get to the point where there's enough revenue that you can then justify, you know, raising funding, right? If you're, if you're non-technical or you have a side job that's uh, putting money into it. Well, thanks for coming and, and talking about this. 